So Hurricane Hillary rolled through yesterday and all night, rain and rain, and now we're supposed to get sustained high winds. So I took the compressor and this little blow gun and blew back through every one of those tubes and cleaned them out. And as you can see, there was still a little bit of crap that came out. So I just got on SIS, SIS, CATS uh, parts system, and the gaskets are $62 a piece. I'm like, holy moly. 62 bucks so I got an idea I'm gonna see what they are at another dealer I'll let you know how that turns out so anyway I got a new some new tail lights actually I only got one I'm gonna have to order another one so I got these from I don't can't remember found it on the internet and I got about three different prices and this was the cheapest one. NTL Parts, Duran, Michigan. Uh, Cat wanted 150, so some outfit wanted 150. And another outfit wanted, I don't know, it was a little less. And anyway, it got down to where this outfit, NTL Parts, in Duran, Michigan. I think I paid I'm gonna have to go look, but it was pretty reasonable. Fifty bucks, I think, for that. Guess what I did the other day while I was installing those uh LED lights on the motor grader. Yeah, I left the disconnect on, ran the battery down. Anyway, those are the LED lights. I bought two of them to put there. And I came out last night in a pitch black to see how bright they were. And there was no juice. So I figured if those are nice and bright, I'll get two more to replace those up there. This thing used to have a wiring harness through it up here because they did have the light bar on it and it was fastened right there but i probably pulled all the old wires out when i replaced the hoses because i can't seem to see the wires anywhere so i'd like to get a light bar for the front it's impossible to drive these down the road if you don't have a light bar you just can't see far enough down the road cars come and blind you I got one new light on there. So I ordered another one. And she started up. I've charged both batteries back up. Somebody remind me in the comments below to turn the damn key off again. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. I know what's wrong with me. Don't give a shit anymore. All right, I put it over closer to the shop, put one of those solar jazzers on her and get her batteries all the way up. Look at all this lonely iron. Somebody give us a call. You guys out here supporting me today by laying under the service truck and snoozing. <laughs> so, bunch of town got me some more gasket remover and sprayed on there. Meanwhile, I'm working on taking the fan off. Look at that! Look at how clean that is in there. That's pretty amazing. So, I tried turning these blades and they will turn. That's actually in excellent shape in there. I am very surprised. So this is what I'm looking at, roll pins. You wanna see roll pins on both sides. 
make sure none of them are broke um, that the springs are in good shape all that good stuff so the last thing you want is a blade to eject but anyway these blades will actually turn I was pleasantly surprised very surprised so I've got to undo all these bolts to get this off so that looks like half inch so I'll get the zip gun and get those off so the question here is do I want to bust my guts and lift this off by hand or do I want to do the smart thing and start the service truck and use the crane my my instincts are saying oh Jeff you could take that off by hand and then my other little common sense thing is saying but why why do you want to why do you want to risk hurting yourself I don't know it ain't that heavy I don't think I don't think it's that heavy is it ah screw it I'll start the truck you talk me into it Okay, we're hooked on there, Chippy. Skippy. Ready to come off, Chippy. Skippy, that's not even tight. Come on, Chip. Pull your head out your ass here. That's a coming down, Mark. Oh, yeah, I am told you right there. Uh-huh. Way to go, Jeff. All right. Why is that such a tight fit? That's a taunt fit, man. Stupid thing. Get him over there. There we go. Up, up and away, my beautiful Huber fan. Alright, boom up. Maximum lifting. Decapitate yourself. Don't look up. I said don't look up. Holy moly. Alright, which way are we going? Not that way. Gotta go this way. Thank you. I'll stand under here for protection. Hope that don't drop on my radiator. That would be bad. Hope it don't drop on Mr. Griffey. Griffey, you need a hard hat and a body shield. Are you looking to poop there, buddy? I don't want you to poop in there. Oh, he saw it. He's gonna get out of the way. Don't run on those. You tell him, Griffin. Mark to there, really. Right on the hose, uh, you know, cut the hose in here. What an idiot. Idiot. Alright, so. What do we got here? We got an adapter. It's gonna come off. Should come off. And then. Gotta figure out how to get that miserable spring undone. That is the dumbest thing Cat ever did. The old ones used to come to a bracket and they had a bolt so you could start it and then tighten the nut. Oh, not this new stuff. It's just a bitch. Absolute bitch.
dumbest fan drive update they ever did on an H. They should have kept the G series style fan, which mounts in the hard nose. So you don't, when you change the belts, you don't have to go over the fan. So this got AC. So you want to change the belt on just the AC? Good lord, what a what a nightmare. So if you got to pull this fan drive out to work on it, you got to pull the radiator and the fan. This is the only way you're going to get it out. Anyway, the bearing on the idlers toast. This doesn't seem to be too sloppy, but the idler bearing is garbage. Absolute garbage. All right, I'm up and away. Okay, somebody said to replace these studs because they break. So they had a stud here, one there, and they had a bolt in that one. That is the water flow switch. As you can see, that's totaled. Need one of those. So, what I'll have to do is undo these. It's probably pull this pull off with this because these are going to be nasty to get apart but I should most definitely change the o-ring so there's the plates in there that cover the water jacket and then that cooler goes in just behind it there and then the tranny one goes in that plate down there so depending on what I see here in front of the cooler, it's going to determine whether I'm taking this all out and the plates off the block. So I see some engine oil buildup here. I see a lot of black in here, which indicates the seal on the water pump pulley is no good. So I need to take that off. So I'm hoping the bearings aren't kaput. So it feels like there's a lot of slop in there. So I might be calling my buddy Brian Block and seeing if he can get that shaft done for me. Gonna be going through a water pump. What do you think? Still going? That stuff, whatever it is, it's not gritty like stock leak. I don't know. You know sticky. What we got here? We got a blue blue goo here. I don't know what that is. Probably silicone. Yeah, it's silicone. Wow, that is really as chunky and hard as that. I'm gonna say we're gonna need an oil cooler. Man, that's bad. That is really stuck in there. So that's coming out. It's most definitely coming out. Can't see what's in there. I do see some junk. I don't know. That is some nasty stuff. Holy cow. It's just ate the metal. Ate it up. There's, it's just gone right there. I'll bet money that cooler is going to leak. That's junk. Cooler's junk. Need a cooler. God, I hope I don't need a tranny one. That's going to be a lot of money.
All right. About that stupid Dex cool, and you run an engine low on coolant, and it's a, and if it gets exposed to bare metal, it just goes to town and corrodes the snot out of it. I guess. I just know what I read about it, and sometimes you don't know what to believe, whether it's true or wise tales, bullshit. I don't know. I just no, they had a lot of lawsuits over it when it first came out. So what I'm seeing, this was plugged up with lots of little pieces of rust particles, metal. Anyway, I ran a welding rod through there, pushed it to the other end. I don't know why. I don't think this cooler is worth running as ate up as it is. So Stop Leak didn't do that. My understanding is Dexcool does that when you run them low on coolant. And you get air in the system, Dex cool attacks the metal, has a reaction with it, eats it up. Hence all the corrosion and stuff in the top tank. The top tank was the worst. But it's down in there. It's everywhere. So coolers have got to come off. These bonnets have to come off. I have to pull the plates off the side of the block. And clean all that out. After cooler is probably definitely gonna have to come out and get cleaned. This just gets worse all the time. Yeehaw! And this is the Eider pulley. Check that out. She was just about ready to go. So I imagine the shaft is yeah, it's got a whopping groove in it. That's probably messed up good. The fan drive doesn't seem to be too bad though, so put new bearings and seal on that and put that back in. Okay, so I've been uh, scraping gaskets off and whatnot. Uh, 336 is loaded up. Uh, Matt's changing the final drive oil in number four. Anyway, I need to get in the truck and get going, get it out there. They're going out to see which way I got to come in to this job. So I'll talk to you later.